All right, this was requested video. Uh, I mentioned in a previous video, I think it was right after or right before I took the exam P, I mentioned this, that these, personally to me, I think a lot of you agree that these are the hardest problems, actually. These combinatorial type arguments. It's The reason why, in my opinion, is that it's hard to know when you're right. Sometimes you even, I noticed with exam P especially, they give you problems that are small enough that you can actually count all the possibilities. And this is actually one of them. So I urge you, especially when I look at a specific case, uh, to count the possibilities to see that actually what I'm gonna write down is true. So, um, this is the setup. I'm not doing it the way that they did it because I don't even, I looked at it once, I was like, what the hell are you even doing? Whatever, right? Um, I have a random variable, I'm calling it n. n is the number of exact matches. I emphasize exact matches not because I need to do, because I want you to make sure you think of it that way. Uh, so exact matches of envelopes with corresponding letters. So what I'm saying here <coughs> is that if n is 1, that means only one of these letters goes to the correct envelope. So either this goes here, this goes here, this goes here, this goes there. I don't have more than one. So exact uh, matches. Right, so I can't, I can't say, it's not in, it's sort of uh, inclusive, right? It's not, um, so like when n is 1, it can be like 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or, or you know, that's it. There's only 4. All right, so we're interested in this. Probability that there's at, at, at least 1, right? There's at least 1 match. God, I hope that's what it is, right? I'm pretty sure that's what the question says. Yeah, it's at least one match, right? So here are my envelopes, and here are my letters, and um, they need to go somewhere, and I'm randomly placing them. Uh, first thing I want to ask is, um, how many possible ways are there to place the envelopes? This should be easy for you. This part should be easy, because if you think about it, if, um, if I'm taking envelope one, doesn't matter which envelope I take, if I just take a envelope, say it's two, whatever, how many choices do I have for it? Well, there are four, four choices for envelope two. And then whatever the next envelope is, say three, there are three choices, because I placed one here. Then there are two choices that are one choice. So that means total possible outcomes are 24, right? Because it's four factorial. So let me just write that over here, okay? There are four factorial possible um, outcomes. That should be straightforward to you. That should be straightforward. That's not, that's not the hard part. That's not the tricky part whatsoever. <coughs> now I'm gonna deal with the, the trickier part. And um, by the way, I considered computing this by using the complement. And if someone has a way of doing that, I'm more than happy to hear it, but it seemed a little actually more confusing than I thought it should be. So I'm actually gonna do this directly. So I'm gonna compute probability. I'm gonna go sort of backwards. Uh, I'm after, remember, I'm after this, and so um, the way that I've set up my random variable is that um, each of these events, or actually outcomes, n equals 1, 2, 3, they're all mutually exclusive, uh, meaning there's no intersection. I can't have one exact match and have two exact matches. That means I don't have to use, like, when I compute this, it's just going to be probability n equals 1 plus probability n equals 2, etc. I don't have to do like probability n equals 1 and 2. Can't happen, right? All right. So what is, I'm going to start backwards. I'm going to start at probability n equals 4. In other words, what's the probability that there are four exact matches? How can I get four exact matches? The way you want to think about this, up top, I have a fraction. Down below, I already have 4 factorial, which is 24. So the total possible outcomes. <coughs> in the numerator, you're going to think to yourself, how many, in how many ways can I get a success, basically? How many ways can I get four matches? One way. I mean, one goes to one, two goes to two, three goes to three, four goes to four. One way. So this is one over 24. Not too bad. Now let's try n equals three, which is even easier, really. Can I get three exact matches? Think about it for a second. 
how can I get three exact matches? Well, that would mean, let's just, for example, one example would be this. Two goes to two, three goes to three, four goes to four, but then where the hell does one go? It'd have to go to one. So this has to be zero, actually, over four factorial, which is zero. You cannot have exactly three matches. You automatically would get four. All right. Now let's go to probability n equals two. Probability n is two. So let me um, erase this. So let's think about this for a second. Well, I'm just going to sort of think of an example. Example would be, let's say that one goes to one and four goes to four. All right. Um, what are the choices for two and three? Are there choices? Well, this is saying that there's exactly two matches. One goes to one, four goes to four. That means two would have to go to three, and three would have to go to two. So they don't have a choice, actually. And if you think about it, no matter which two I, I uh, sort of force to have an exact match, the other two have no choice. They just go to whatever's left over. So this comes down to how many ways can I choose two from four? Because how many ways can I choose the two that go to the correct envelopes out of four? Well, that's four choose two. So this is four choose two divided by four factorial, which is equal to six over 24. Yeah, all right, one more to go. This is the most confusing one, n equals one. How can I get exactly one match? This is the most confusing one. That's why I saved it for last. <coughs> this is exactly the situation that I urge you to write down the cases if you don't see what I'm about to do. And if you think about it, in an exam situation, you would have time to do this. You would have time to do this. Write them down. If n equals one, I'm only getting one exact match. Let's say that two goes to two, okay? Then let's move on. How many choices are there for three? How many choices are there for three to go to? Well, I'm only gonna have one exact match. So three can either go to one or it can go to four. So let's say that, uh, let's say that, so three has two choices. Keep that in mind. Three has two choices, right? So three, let's say that it goes to, let's say it goes to four. All right. Now let's go to four. How many choices does four have? Now be careful. Could four go to one? Or sorry, could four go to three? Can four, can four go to three? I'm going to put a question mark right here. Think about a second. If four goes to three, then one has to go to one. And that can't happen because I only have one exact match. So four cannot go to three, which means four must go to one. Four must go to one. So therefore, one must go to four. Now, let me recap what I just said. We only have one exact match. Two goes to two. Whatever thing I pick next, whether it's three or four or one, there's two choices. In this case, I picked three. Three can either go to four or it can go to one. Okay, so I picked that choice. In this case, three went to four. But for the next one, there's only one choice, and for the last one, there's only one choice. So there are. Now, how do I pick the one that I chose to exactly match? Well, there are four choices to exactly match. So there's four choose one. These are the things that I'm choosing to exactly match. Four choose one of them, there's four times the next thing, which in this case uh, was three, there's two choices, then there's one choice, and there's one choice divided by four factorial. Four choose one is four times two is eight. This is eight over 24. <coughs> I think you can see what the answer is then. Okay, this takes care of it uh, because these are mutually exclusive events. I can write down the following. So again, if this is confusing to you, I mean, write it out. Just literally go through the cases. It's what I call the brute force stupid way. But I've been there. It's not stupid in the idea that you're stupid. It's just stupid because it's just, it's not clever, right? But do it. I mean, honestly, there are a lot of questions that SOA does. They even do it that way, the brute force way. Okay, but go ahead and do it and convince yourself that this is 8 out of 24. All right, so now... The thing we're after, we're pretty much done, right? I mean, pretty much done. So the probability that n is eight greater than or equal to one is equal to 
probability n equals 1, probability n equals 2, or probability n equals 3, or probability n equals 4. Right? It either equals 1, 2, 3, or 4. This is equal to 8, or 2, which was 6, or 1, over 24. I mean, 3 was 0, right? This guy was 0. So this is equal to 15 out of 24, which is equal to 5 out of 8. And that's it. Tell me what you think. Again, uh, if you have a way of computing this using the complement of the desired probability, share it. Let me know. Thank you.